Okay, so uh, uh, once again, I'll, I'll turn things over uh, to Quinton to introduce this evening's speaker. Okay, Frank, I'll be happy to do that. Unfortunately, we're a little short of uh, customers this evening because of a little mix up with uh, who's got the direction to come here. If you click on Sundays, you come to here. I don't know what happens when you click on Saturdays for next time. But anyway, we're gathered together <laughs> to listen to Frank, who graduated with a degree in business. He is a CPA. So watch any loose change you happen to drop out of your pockets because he'll be right on it. He's been a mineral collector for many, many years. He likes metals, things like pyrite, things like copper, and the rest of the stuff that you get in oxidized zones of mines. And because he's been along for so many years, he has joined a lot of clubs. He's been the president of this one since 2013. He's been on the executive of the Walker Club since 2013. And he's been a member of the Waterloo Club as well. So very well versed in the mineral kingdom. Tonight, he's got to talk on what little things in the mineral thin kingdom spin around and form rings. And perhaps he's got a good explanation of why they do that. So while he's spinning out his tail, we should probably shut down and cut off the videos so that we don't bust up too much band space there and let Frank talk. Frank, the chair is yours. Thank you, Quentin. Somehow I just got bounced out. Okay, so uh, there we go. So um, uh, what I'd like to uh, uh, share with you folks this evening is um, my personal fascination with mineral rings. So this, uh, this goes back um, to my uh, earliest interest in minerals. Uh, I, I joined the Kitchener Waterloo Club in um, 1973 uh, when I was 13. Hey, and Frank, sorry, Frank, you're not broadcasting the slides. It's, you've got to start the slide and then do the screen share. Hit your Windows key to get your task part back. Sorry, hit the Windows key. That's not doing it, right? as well if you uh, hit the uh, windows key right oh yeah there we go and then go to zoom and here now do your screen share and you've got to choose that one okay. 
working on now. That's better. Yeah, that's working. Okay. My apologies for that. And thanks to, to Michael. Um, Okay, so that's working now. Um, so I started with the KW Jevon Mineral Club in uh, 1973. Um, and uh, we're getting feedback on something or an echo. Okay, it's only me then. Um, so that exposed me to some topics uh, that I've been interested in ever since. Uh, so I've been fascinated with the minerals of the Michigan copper country, uh, of Laurium, Greece, and it first exposed me to Micromouse. And so this is a, a picture of my very first Micromount, uh, an Agilaria specimen from uh, the Mohawk mine in copper country, um, uh, FR number one in the collection. Uh, I still have that one. Um, it's in a box. Uh, unfortunately, that I haven't come across yet, but uh, uh, but I, I did have it, uh, you know, on my desk uh, um, ten months ago. Um, uh, and, and this is, uh, you know, my uh, specimen number thirty-six, which is my first boulangerite specimen. It's uh, uh, needles of boulangerite on um, calcite and fluorite, and um, and, and that was one of the first specimens I had that showed minerals of uh, an acicular habit. And I, I, I've always found that to be quite interesting. Um, uh, and this is uh, my very first boulangerite ring um, mounted in 1979. And, uh, you know, that kind of blew my mind when I first saw that. Um, uh, rock that can form a crystal that is circular. Uh, so that's something that's uh, been an interest of mine ever since. Um, but that was back in, uh, you know, 1979. Uh, uh, I was in university at that point. Um, I had to spend a little more time on my studies. So, it, you know, my collection got put in storage uh, which I'm sure happened to lots of folks in this room. Um, and it stayed in storage, you know, for 20 years or so. Um, but I never lost interest in minerals. Uh, and I would spend time uh, from time to time and, uh, you know, going to shows and so forth. And, and one time I came across uh, an old rocks and minerals magazine um, that had a cover story uh, about uh, the Boulangerite rings. And it was written by uh, Floyd Caesar, who was a member of the Kitchener Club. Uh, and uh, Floyd um, was like my mentor's mentor. So he was one of the first people uh, that got me involved in microminerals. Um, and uh, I was uh, uh, intrigued, you know, so many years later to come across this um, article that, that he had written. Um, and so there's, you can, you can see a couple of photos from that article um, uh, showing a mineral ring. Um, and, and I just thought that was kind of cool that this was a high school teacher from my town who was one of the people that got me interested in the hobby. And then years later, I came across an article that he had written in Rocks and Minerals. Um, also uh, uh, during school, uh, I would spend, you know, spare time in the library and they had a subscription to the mineralogical record. So I was able to look at back issues of the MinRec and uh, came across volume one, number three, that, uh, you know, the cover story was devoted to mineral rings. And I became aware that boulangerite wasn't the only mineral that formed rings, which, you know, I guess shouldn't have surprised me, but uh, it, it did. And I thought, well, that's cool. There's other minerals that, that form rings. So 
uh, again, things were on pause with my collection, but then about 15 years ago, uh, I decided to become uh, more active. And, um, and so my interest in mineral rings um, got reactivated and re-energized. And as, I, as the slide says, the, the quest continues. So what, what's this all about? Well, here, here's a, a photo of uh, Boulangerite, uh, 0.2 millimeters across. And you can see the, 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 the cylinder shape that this crystal forms. Here's some other photos. The one on the left, you, you can see forms a, a loop in it. Um, and the, the one on the right has a, has a ring that seems to be like a, a narrow cylinder uh, with uh, a bunch of, um, of, of needles interspersed. And for, for those of you in the room and, and who have been uh, members and, and have attended previously, you, you guys are familiar with this material. Uh, coming from the Rogers mine in Maydock. Um, in this, uh, this specimen shows uh, six rings um, scattered across it. Here's a couple more. You can see on the, on the left, there's a, a ring on the lower left, uh, a, as well as a, a, a ring on the upper center. The, the photo on the right has a, has a couple of rings in it, uh, one at the very bottom. The, this one shows a neat little cylinder in the, in the upper left, um, and uh, you can sort of see the interior of the cylinder. So it gives you, you, you know, some more insight into the sort of structure of, of this crystal. Uh, another example that has some rings in the uh, in the calcite as well as a, a, a longer cylinder. Here's another one. This one is kind of neat. There's a, a close up of that, and you can see the cylinder has sort of like two different <laughs> diameters. So I. I I, I get a kick out of the sort of industrial look of these things. Now, the, the boulangerite from, from the Rogers mine in Maydock is, is material that we're, we're very familiar with here. Um, but, you know, there's boulangerite rings from other localities too. And, and so that's part of my quest with this is, is uh, collecting examples of these rings from, from other localities. And one other locality, uh, Canadian locality, is the Van Silver property in BC. So here you can see an example of a, of a ring. But it's not just Canadian locality. So here's an example of a Landrite ring from uh, Tasmania, Australia. This is a, a Steve Sorrell photo. And the Le Revie quarry in uh, France is, uh, uh, is well known for, for uh, rings of boulangerite and some other uh, minerals that we'll, we'll get to shortly. From Tuscany, again, another example with a, a ring in the, in the middle of the photo that uh, is set amongst uh, a, a tangle of needles. And, and from the Herja mine in, in Romania, another famous locality. Uh, and as that min record uh, indicated, there's, there's other mineral species that form rings. So one of them is bintimite. This is from the Rogers mine as well. And the bintimite is this uh, tannish colored mineral that is, um, it's an alteration product of, of the boulangerite. And, and you can see that there's sort of thin 
faint rings uh, in front of uh, the more solid looking ring. And here's a, a, a another example with um, a ring at the lower left. That's it's a little faint. Um, it, you know, it's it's either bentimite or it's possibly uh, a, a remnant of a hydrocarbon. There's another example with uh, with two rings, one in the, the upper center and one in the lower center of the photo. Another mineral, uh, uh, cheriophyte. Uh, this is a, a, a newer mineral um, that uh, uh, hails from Italy. And um, uh, again, it, it shows an interesting uh, set of rings um, in the in the lower center part, um, and also forms in you know tangled masses of needles. Uh, cylindrite. Um, cylindrite is uh, is kind of interesting. I mean, the the name is uh, alludes to the shape that the the mineral forms in. Um, and you can you can see just left of center there's a a, a needle pointing at uh, about ten o'clock um, or sorry a ring a cylinder pointing at about ten o'clock from uh, the center and um, uh, cylindrate was uh, 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 has been known for for a long long time it's it's possibly you know the first um, ring-shaped mineral um, discovered. This one comes from Bolivia. Here's another specimen from Bolivia. This one's a, a Trevor Boyd uh, photo. And you can you can see the the rounded shape of the cylinder. Another mineral uh, is dead sinite. This one from Germany. It's a Simone Citone uh, photo, uh, and you can see the, you know, the ring that forms kind of in the just left to center and the and the acicular needles on the specimen. Uh, James sinite. You can see there in the center. There's a ring. Um, um, most of these uh, are inclusions. Um, there's a few of the minerals uh, that that do form on the surface, um, or or perhaps the you know the surface has been cleaved off to reveal uh, the ring. Uh, you know the the cylindrite uh, are are on the surface of the specimen. Um, some of the rings and needles of the, of the other minerals are, are on the surface, but many of them are, are inclusions. Another Jamesonite uh, from China. This is a, a Pavel Martinov photo. And you can see there's uh, at least three rings in this one, along with some needles. Another one from China from Pavel. This one's pretty cool, like with uh, sort of intersecting hula hoops of uh, Jamesonite. Another example of Jamesonite from Romania. And again, in the, in the upper, sorry, in the upper part of that um, kind of narrow cylinder, you, you can sort of see the, the strands. Uh, so you can get the sense that this was wound around something. And an example from Portugal, from uh, Pedro Alves. Um, another one is a, is a, a newer mineral, Marilaniite, um, from uh, the Marilani Hills in Tanzania. Uh, and this one um, is a John Jazz Jack specimen. 
Um, so the, the crystal, the longest crystal there is 0.75 of a millimeter. So, you know, these are tiny. Um, and it's, um, it's uh, sort of like an elongated cigar shape. Uh, Millerite from Hall, Halls Gap, Kentucky. This is a, Ro a Rolf Luetke photo. Uh, another one, this from, from Alan Goldstein. And here's a, an SEM photo uh, from Alan Goldstein. Sorry, go back. It's funny how pyrite slipped into this presentation. Um, there's another one. This one's cheating a little bit. It, you know, it's it's not a single crystal that's formed a ring. It's a, it's an aggregate of of crystals that form a, a loop. But hey, it's pyrite, and it's it's my presentation. So. <laughs> That's a Pedro Alves photo. Another well-known uh, example is, is Rutil from uh, uh, San Luis Potosi in Mexico. This is a, a, a Rutil inclusion in Topaz. And tubulate. Um, in the in the center of the photo, you can you can see a, a cylinder. Uh, so you know, again, the, the name of tubulite comes from the the shape of uh, the, this rather unique shape of these specimens. Um, this is from uh, Italy, and uh, tubulite is uh, is also a relatively new spe species. Here's a, a, another photo from, from the same locality in, in Italy. And you, you can see a, a couple of rings as well as a, a cylinder in the, in the center. So why are they all black? Well, they're, they're not, but um, here's, a, here's another example where you know, I, I don't know that this should really count as a mineral ring or not, but it's a, it's a, it's a curl or a loop of, of malachite from uh, um, the Mocklatine mine in Austria. Um, the little corkscrew of malachite from the same locality. So, so again, I, I've just always found it fascinating that you know what what people outside of this room think of as just rocks form these amazing shapes, right? It's it's not to be expected, right? Um, so here's a here's a list of the species um, that that I've managed to uh, come across that form rings. Um, the minerals that are in white. Uh, have photos in this presentation. Um, the ones that are in the uh, 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 orangey tan color, uh, columbite and aweite, um, I haven't been able to come across photos of them as rings or have seen specimens of them forming rings, but I've been um, informed by some, uh, some uh, experts that they do in fact exist. So I've included them in this list for completeness. Um, and then there's a couple of other minerals at the bottom, haloisite and chrysotile that I've included. Um, they, they form rings and, and several of similar species to them form rings too, but they form them at such a, uh, you know, microscopic level that they're not really of interest to collectors. Um, the haloisite is a, a clay mineral um, and uh, the chrysotile is like an asbestos um, mineral. And so, you know, their, their underlying structure forms rings, but 
they don't present themselves in in th in, the, in the size that we would really be able to view that in, um, and they're not particularly attractive. So I'm not interested in in uh, in in collecting them. So here's this list of species uh, reorganized. Um, and when you look at it this way, based on the chemistry of them, uh, you, you can see that most of these species have um, lead, antimony, and sulfur in their uh, composition. And so um, it seems to me that that's of significance. Um, the, you know, the, there are a couple of other minerals that form uh, rings that, that don't have all those elements. Um, but, you know, that top part of the chart, uh, they seem to have that in common. Um, so I'm, I'm sure that that has something to do with uh, the structure um, that leads to the rings being formed. Uh, and here's a, a summary list of all of the localities that I've been able to uh, to identify that uh, these ringed minerals come from. So how are they formed? Well, you know, the short answer is uh, we're not too sure. Um, there's a couple of, uh, of thoughts. One, one is that uh, uh, some kind of capillary action um, leads to their formation. And that seems to be the case for the boulangerite and tubulite. Uh, so in like the capillary action, what, what that means is that the, the idea is that there is a bubble that's either like a liquid or a gas, and that exerts some surface tension causing uh, like an acicular needle. Um, to wrap around it. So here's my simple gr graphic to show how that might occur. So uh, it, you imagine a cube, it would look like this, um, and an elongated cube would be, you know, a series of these cubes in, in one direction, leading to an elongated crystal. So if you think of it that way, uh, a needle kind of forms the same way or grows the same way. And then with the capillary action, you have a, a bubble and you have a needle that is, uh, you know, growing, but the, um, the, the, the bubble exerts a force on that needle causing the needle to grow around the bubble. And then the bubble might disappear and you're left with a needle. So another, uh, another method of uh, explaining how these uh, crystals could form is the idea of misfit layers. Um, an example of that is the cylindrate. Um, so the idea here is that there's alternating layers um, of, of stronger bonds and weaker bonds, and there's a chemical substitution that occurs and this results in, in a distortion or, or bending um, between those layers leading to a cylindrical shape. So uh, to kind of illustrate what misfit layers would look like is here's, here's a, a layer with a strong bond uh, above a layer with a, a weak bond. Um, and you have a, a substitution occurring in the layer with the weak bond. And that causes that uh, shape to bend with the overall result being that you have a, a cylindrical shape. Uh, and uh, uh, another method that's been proposed is uh, screw dislocation. And an example of that would be the uh, malachite um, uh, curls and uh, corkscrew. Uh, and, and so in this, it's, uh, it's stepped growth that uh, results in some distortion. Um, and you have spiral growth around uh, a center point or center plane. So 
here you have uh, sort of a, an example of, of, a, of a cube or whatever growing and there's a, a distortion that's occurred in it causing it to be offset um, and the growth is occurring around this central point. And so as units, sorry, are being added, um, it, it causes this helical growth pattern. There's another example of a, of a boulangerite um, with this uh, acicular crystal kind of forming a, like a, a hairpin shape. And so I'm still on the search. I keep looking for more examples and of different species and from different localities. And um, uh, I, I understand this is sort of a, a niche collecting interest, um, but I encourage you to take a look at uh, minerals that form rings. Uh, okay, Michael. Uh, so first off, um, the so-called rams horn gypsum would that uh, not fall in like an alkyl? It it could, um, and I'm I haven't been able to come up with a particularly good way to articulate how to differentiate between them. Yeah, it's um, I'm, somehow I, I, I haven't quite been able to figure out why the metallic minerals growing in rings seems different to me than the malachite and the ram's horn gypsum. And there's other examples, right? Um, and so it's more or less that I've just decided to, you know, put a fence around these ones for the most part. And, Yeah, for those, that's, that seems to be pretty common, but it, it sort of doesn't explain, you know, some of the other ones like pyrite and millerite, but yeah. Sorry, can you just make sure that you repeat the question for the... Um, uh, sure, okay, so the, the question was, um, what about uh, ram's horn uh, selenite or gypsum? Um, and, you know, does that count as a, a mineral that forms rings? Um, any other questions? Uh, I, I haven't done that, but, uh, but yeah, that's for someone, uh, sorry, the, the, the question was, uh, uh, ha have I given any thought to the uh, uh, environment of these different localities for the uh, lead uh, antimony um, sulfur examples? Um, and uh, I, I haven't. Uh, for uh, like a professional that wanted to research this, um, that would obviously be uh, uh, one of the first things to, to start investigating. Um, uh, I, I just thought it was kind of cool that when I put the list together and you know just looked at it for a little bit, I could see the commonality of those elements in it um, and uh, uh, left it at that. Uh, Pete? So the question is, uh, has anyone verified that the ruteal rings in the topaz from uh, Mexico are in fact ruteal? Um, and I've, uh, I don't know. I've, I've tried to look into that um, and don't 
ha haven't been able to find out where if, if anyone has done any testing on that at all. Um, but the consensus in the literature I have been able to find is that it is routine. It's just a, like it seems to be the kind of thing that it's just been accepted that it's routine. I don't know that anyone's actually studied it. And um, I don't know that there are so many examples that people have been willing to sacrifice specimens for the testing. And, and it's, it's somewhat of an esoteric subject. So I don't know that anyone's interested in, in researching it. Is that right? Are they all from the same location? Right. Which is the right question, which is you can find out which is the most But I've also still that Mexico will have to be there. Yes, I have no doubt. But I've also read that they're hollow. That they're which? Hollow? Yeah. Okay, so for the people on Zoom, the, the, the comments are that uh, um, uh, Andy was saying he hasn't seen um, uh, specimens. Uh, uh, of this, and 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 Pete Richards was saying that he has uh, dozens. Um, so it's and uh, and this is a you know I was going to say it's it's a it's a well known occurrence of rings, um, but that is in the context of a pretty niche subject. So you know, well known has a different meaning. Um, and that uh, uh, Pete had said also that they are, uh, some folks have reported that they are hollow. Um, but um, you're the second person to have asked me about whether they are in fact routine. And uh, I, again, I've, I've looked into it, but I haven't found anyone who's actually done any testing on it. Um, and I have two examples. I'm not really willing to give one up, so. <laughs> So the comments are that um, there, there are uh, uh, several examples where there are routial needles uh, rather than rings in the topaz or allegedly routial um, and they uh, they poke out of the surface. Uh, so it, it might be possible to do some testing on those to, uh, to determine whether it is rutil or, or what it is. Um, yeah. A any other, uh, Andy? Is it okay if I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I'll let you go to uh, That was a great talk. It was really interesting. Um, a couple of comments I have. First of all, with the, the Bintamite. Bintamite? Bintamite, okay. Uh, do you think that that's a pseudomorphic replacement? And if it is, does it really constitute a ring? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so, um, a pseudomorphic. So the, the question is, uh, is the Bindheimite um, a pseudomorph of the Boulangerite? Um, and if it is, does that really constitute a ring? So answering in reverse, I think if it's circular, it's a ring. So- Are you giving me a circular argument? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, so I am giving a circular argument. Um, as to whether it's a pseudomorph, um, so the definition of a pseudomorph is, is basically a, a, a mineral that replaces another mineral and keeps the shape of the mineral that it's replacing. So if it's a alteration of Boulangerite to Bintimite, I think that would be a pseudomorph. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think it's fair. I think it's, okay, so Andy and I agree. <laughs> you made me think, and you, know, you might think that this is a niche uh, area of study, and, and it is because the number of minerals that form rings is relatively small, but it's still a very, very interesting one. I wonder if you could 
re-show or bring up again one of your photos. And it was one of your early photos from the Rogers line where you had both a ring, or if you can find it, that has both the ring and the needles. Uh, yeah, so there are specimens that, that have both. Yep. Maybe I may ask the wrong question here to follow it up. Okay, so the, the, the question um, was uh, uh, to, to go back to the presentation and show uh, uh, one of the photos of the boulangerite um, forming rings and needles in the same specimen. So um, let me do that. Yeah, it, we have the technology. I really like that with the hairpin. So, um, uh, so again, that, that would be an example, right? There's a ring at the top of it, and there's needles at the bottom. You know what? We can use this one. That's, I just prefer the one that was early on. Okay. Well, I can. Do you know the one? I'm not sure which one you mean, but. The one that had both. No. No, it wasn't the box. Yeah, there you go. That's not me. So this got me thinking, and maybe that's a dangerous thing because I start asking questions. When I start. But I, I think your your observation of the, the chemical relationship among the salt to salt minerals that form these rings is right on the number. And the real difference or the real characteristic of these minerals, they have lead, they'll have iron, they may even have moly like the rolinite, things like that. But what's really important is they have both antimony and sulfur. Now, antimony is a funny element because it's, it can change its redox state. It can come in a variety of flavors of, of, uh, of antimony. It can be, can be an anion as well as a cation. That, that's important because sometimes minerals can have both of the, both of the valence, both positive as well as negative. And I was thinking along these lines, I thought, well, maybe. Like antimony is much bigger than salt. So that could create misfit. So I thought, all right, if that's the case, then all the needles that we see of Boulangerite should be forming in rings because of the misfit. Until I saw this, this kind of a photo that you showed. And it shows that only some of them do, which then said, well, it's probably not that just simple antimony sulfur relationship. So I think one of the last cases we made for why these things um, can form rings, you had some models or some ideas, hypotheses, and one of them was these screw dislocations. And I think that may be the answer. And what we do know about these things is that they're forming in another mineral, usually fluoride, we're talking about the, the Rogers mine material, at least that's what I've seen most, most often. But when you see acicular things, you also think fast crystallization. That's, that's, that's kind of the way I think of it as, as something. So if you have any kind of misfit or any kind of problem in the growth, during the growth, it can get, it can start to change its morphology. So I'm thinking here that, and just like you were asking about why Millerite might not do this. Millerite, we often see it as being NIS. So one nickel for one sulfur. But it's not really like that. It's actually a little bit of a defect structure. So the amount of nickel to sulfur is not always one to one. It could be like 0.99 to one, but a little bit of nickel may be missing. And sometimes that happens when minerals grow very fast. Things just don't get into the right place, even though the growth continues on. So this photo was actually the one that made me think is that sometimes they're, they're forming just as straight up needles, and sometimes they're forming as rings. I think this may be a straight up growth feature and there may be a dislocation just like you were talking about as your, your third model. So I, I don't know if that's the answer. I don't think the chemistry, if you check the chemistry of these things, I don't think you'd find a big difference, but I think you might find some problems in the ratios of the ions. And I think that, that may be the, the, the key. The bubble one, I think, was this not a popular subject recently or a few years ago about the bubble? I, I read it somewhere, I can't remember. Maybe somebody else should remember. Yeah. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but was your interpretation of that photo assumes that the ring and the needles uh, form at the same time? The close in time. Close, close in time. Yeah. 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 But they're individual. Yeah. 
Yeah, not all, but they're but they're but they're they're basically they're chemically very very similar, except that the ones that are forming green probably are growing such that they've missed something. Maybe right. the end one, for example. Well, the one at the end uh, I, I found fascinating. So the 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 yeah, the hermit is cool. Sure. So um, uh, I'm trying to find a way to summarize this for the folks on Zoom. Um, so it's, um, I, I guess I'll simplify it. And, and Andy agreed with me. What? He didn't, but um, I'll just claim it. This suggests to me um, a change in environmental factors. Uh, uh, it's, because it starts to grow well, so there's, there's one of two models happening. Either it starts growing straight, then it's compelled to curve for some reason, and then something right. changes, and it can change That is exactly what will happen. Something will change, and then it will just temper. That's right. the way minerals grow. They just temper, they just blow up whatever was there before they're going to temper. Right. Or, now, this, this could be a change in the environment. And as I was saying, like with antimony, yeah. antimony is a funny element. I think actually because it's so weak, it's variable. Right. It could be 5 plus, 3 plus, 2 minus, 3 minus, mm -hmm. right. So yeah. there could be other parameters. But I think overall, that image we just looked at, to me, says that these things are all growing very close in time. So if there's an environmental change that's going to cause the needles to form into, into rings, then it should be they're all growing. Or they're all following that kind of path. But it's only an isolated one in that one image we just looked at previous. But I'm not discounting uh, right. the environmental conditions as well. Well, the other possibility I was thinking about the interpreting this is that it, it could have grown as a single long needle and then like touch something which it was compelled to No, it's right. templating on, you can see where it's touching on the surface. That's where the growth began. That's probably just the nucleation site. Well, these are actually from calcite. These are actually from calcite. Oh, I don't know that. Okay. Many, many of them are. Uh, yeah, the, the, it's either calcite or fluoride. Yeah. So, so they're, they're actually. Uh, is this one actually? I don't know. So it's not necessarily a point of attack. That's the way I interpret it, but it maybe it's not. I, okay. I, I would have thought that's where it started. Okay, Tracy? We have a question. This is in the. Sure. The question from my is so our rings are scary. Um, so uh, just to repeat the question, it's from Mike Seeds. Are, are the rings found in um, many quarries or are they just found in, in a few locations? Um, and it's, uh, it's one of those things that is, is, is a little difficult to answer. Because, you know, as a general rule, people aren't going out looking for this in, in random quarries. So they, they get found, right? And, um, and then those get collected. Um, I, I don't think they're, I, I don't think you can say they're common. Uh, I mean, the Belangerite rings in, at the Rogers mine, well, that's a prolific locality for Belangerite rings. Um, but I don't know that there are many other localities that would be as prolific. Um, some of the examples in here, uh, sorry? Lengenbach. I, I have not noted any rings, no, but th that's not to say there aren't any from uh, Lengenbach. But um, yeah, uh, you know, they're, they're not a common thing. So, um, are there other locations that have them? I'm sure, um, but it, it it takes collectors to collect and sift through all the material to find them, and and we're talking about some items that are really tiny. So it's it's you know it's it's very luck and happenstance if you came across it. Hope that answers the question, uh, Michael. I'm a total novice on this, but would the radius of curvature of these rings have anything to do with the chemical composition? Uh, and I'm, my question is sort of falsified, perhaps, by the picture that's up there now, because it looks like some of the loops, the radius of curvature is changing and the needles were growing. But it could be that the environment was changing, you know, when hits and starts. But, Anyway, I was wondering if lingerie is one standard typical radius of curvature 
compared to some of the other ones that were shown? Uh, so the so the question is um, uh, is the radius of curvature of the rings of the mineral dictated by the chemical composition of, of that uh, mineral. Um, and um, right. Um, and they're now the belangerite ones are they're they're often quite circular, um, but they also form like mis misshapen circles and um, and just random loops and uh, like squiggly shapes. So it, yeah, I I don't I don't know, but I think it's fair to say that in some cases that chemical composition, as as Andy was describing. Um, leads to this uh, uh, curvature. Um, beyond that, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there he's, and Andy is just saying that those, that top group of minerals in that one chart are, are all sulfur salts. So, so that's probably a, an indicator of that happening. Have you looked at other particular salt Yes. Um, the the only other one that I, I have seen a picture of is uh, semsiite, which again is another sulfur salt. And I contacted uh, someone who posted a picture of it on on Mindat to ask them about it, and they said um, like it, it wasn't analyzed. They labeled it as semsiite because um, semsiite was found at that location. So they assumed the, the, the species. Um, so I, I haven't included it in this list until I get something a little more concrete than that. Um, Pete? Maybe a foot in diameter, but not three inches in diameter. How tight a circle you can make is constrained by the bendability. In this case, of the fibers, which is going to be function of their crystal structure and their thickness. So, a very thin needle is going to be able to curve, curve in a tighter without break than, than a thicker one. So, you have to make it lower limit to the size of a circle you can get for a given size of needle. But it's not an upper limit. Uh, right, okay. The bigger range, like in the spot, the tighter range then is constrained by the flexibility of the fiber and the limit of the certain size. Okay, so I'm gonna try to summarize that for the, the people on Zoom. Um, so, so Pete Richards' um, comment is that if you if you think of a garden hose, um, and you can you can coil a garden hose into a, a, a ring shape that could be quite large um, and could be of various sizes, but um, there's a, a limit on the uh, smallest size coil you could make because of the, um, say, bendability or lack of bendability of the, of, of the hose in this case. So uh, um, in, a, in a mineral, a mineral that is um, of a thinner structure could form um, smaller uh, 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 rings than a mineral that is of a thicker structure. Did I get that close? Right, okay, so it's dependent upon the thickness of the fiber of the mineral. Any other questions? Wait, you got a graphic system? I'm going to come back to school.
<laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you everyone. And, and thanks to uh, our, our, uh, our brave and hearty souls on Zoom who, who managed to overcome the obstacles of an incorrect URL. Um, but still manage to to find um, to find us online. I mean that is dedication, um, and and uh, it's appreciated. Uh, and uh, I will take a look at those URLs and, and try to fix the the link for tomorrow so we can avoid that issue for uh, for Andy's talk. Um, with that, uh, again, thanks to to those of you joining us uh, online, and and thanks to everyone uh, here. And thanks to you, Frank. That's good. Okay. It's, it's a wrap. Very good. <laughs> okay. Cheers, everyone. Salut. Yes. You guys want to wave? Are we... Thank <laughs> you.